Hello everyone, welcome back. I want to share with you guys this new holster that I got from uh, Craft Holsters. It's made by Falco. Um, this is my nicest holster, okay? Uh, some really amazing, amazing craftsmanship. Let me take this thing off, show you guys. Uh, some really fine leather work. And I've done some leather work myself, so I can really recognize some, some fine leather work uh, when I see it. And it, it comes with the, uh, um, with the uh, two mag, uh, carrier Okay, and uh, the cool thing about this is you, you wear it on your body kind of like a vest So it goes on pretty easy. The only thing you got to be careful of is uh, not to get your uh, straps tangled up because that will sometimes happen So you know, basically you want to make sure everything is you know is in line. Okay um, It does have these bottom straps here uh, that allow you to attach it to your belt uh, so basically it becomes a you know, it also has a second function as, a, as suspenders, right? So, now here's the thing: I normally don't wear suspenders. Um, that's normally not how I would be carrying this. So I didn't really, you know, I didn't want to bother putting, the, uh, attaching the suspenders. Plus, I want to be able to take it on and off to, to show you guys. Um, I got it for the Sig uh, 2022. Okay, uh, so this is a full-size gun. Uh, I think uh, this is a 40 caliber. Um, holds 12 rounds. Let me double check that. 12. Yep, 12 round magazine. So um, they will. If you do order this, they will tell you. They will ask you. Um, they will ask you how many rounds your your magazine holds, uh, just so that they can they can make sure that it fits it. Now that's one of the things I noticed with with uh, the craft holsters. A lot of their work is custom. Um, so for example, um, you know I you know from where this thing was. Uh, there's these little holes over here, right, where you can adjust the, the, the length of it. Uh, the way I got it, it was, a, it was a little too high in my armpit, so I adjusted it. You've got these little, um, uh, these little rivet screws here, where, so basically I, I made it a little bit longer. Now, I believe I'm pretty much at the max right now. Uh, I'm 5'10", so if you're somebody that's like, you know, 6'2", six 6'3", foot six foot uh, you're definitely going to want to mention it to them so that they can give you longer straps because otherwise this thing is just, it's not going to be longer. Now, also, mind you, I am, I am a pretty thick guy, right? So a lot of the strap that I'm using is, you know, because you might, you know, because like I said, I'm not a skinny guy, but if you're a, a, a tall and big guy, right? And, you know, if you're a tall, thick guy, yeah, you're definitely going to need longer straps. So make sure you mention your height to them when you're ordering it. So like I said, this is my nicest holster. It's got some amazing, really nice craftsmanship on it. Um, I'm going to take it off one more time so you guys can take a closer look at it. Uh, and I've done leather work myself. I've made uh, holsters. Um, in fact, I've made this. I made that, right? So, I, you know, I can recognize really nice work when I see it. Now, um, one of the things I want you guys to be aware of um, is that when you, if you buy this, uh, you know, aside from telling them what gun you have it for, what size mags it takes, okay, um, you're also gonna, add, you're gonna want to order this uh, leather break-in kit, okay? Um, I had to, uh, it's like ten dollars, okay? So you're gonna get this leather break break-in kit. Craft uh, holster sells it, um, and what you do, they give you some instructions with this. Right, basically you spray it on the inside of the holster, you, you actually, you, they give you this little tool, you rub it around the inside, uh, and then they got really good instructions here, and I, I'm, you, I'm the kind of guy that really doesn't like to read instructions, but uh, the nice thing about these instructions is that, there's, you know, there's only like four or five lines, so, uh, how many lines? Four lines, so I really didn't mind reading it. Um, so what you want to do is, let me put this down for a second, what you're going to do with the leather braking kit, right, is you're gonna apply it to the inside of the holster, like especially like around like the, the edges and the corners, all right. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap the the gun uh, in a plastic bag, right? Because you don't want to get that uh, that that uh, uh, whatever that that fluid on your gun. So you're gonna wrap the gun in a thin plastic bag, and then you're gonna put it in your in your holster. Don't apply any to this area here because you want it to be able to go all the way in. You don't want this part here stretching. And then basically you're gonna put that in there. You're gonna leave this in your safe over overnight, over two nights, uh, and then the gun will, will stretch. I did the same thing with the mags, right? I took out I took out the mags. I sprayed the inside of this, right? I wrapped the mags in a plastic bag. Put these back in. Okay, pressed it all the way in. Right, 
you know, again, wrapped those also in a plastic bag. Uh, and I left it for a couple, for like two nights. Now, I did this twice because I did it the first time. I left it for a couple nights. I, I, I tried it. I, I thought it was still a little snug. So I reapplied that, that solution, that spray, uh, that leather break-in. I applied that a second time. The second time, I got this exactly where I want it, where I can come out, you know, be able to get in and out of this holster. I use this strap here uh, to, to put this in. So uh, now this is a $250 holster. Okay, so so this shoulder holster is not on the cheap side. This is like, you know, if you buy this, you're buying a, a, a fine piece of leather here. Um, if I was going to go to a, an interview, right, uh, for a... Uh, um, a, a gun instructor, you know, business, uh, and I wanted to impress them. This is the holster I would wear. Okay, I would wear this holster. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I got my Kydex holster here. Everybody's got Kydex holster. That's not going to impress anybody. But you, but a holster like this, that's going to impress people, right? So if you want to impress people, you get a holster like this. So, um, what I really want to do here, though, is I want to use this opportunity uh, to talk about um, how and where you would use this holster. So. Um, First thing I will say is that th this holster basically it attaches to your body, right? So it doesn't attach to your clothes. Uh, and the nice thing is, because here's the thing, if you're carrying a gun at your belt, I have found that there's, there's you know, I'm, I'm sort of limited to a certain size, like this is the Shield 9. I really can't carry a gun bigger than this at my belt. It just sticks out too much, or if I'm wearing in, uh, carrying it inside the, the waistband, it kind of digs in. I cannot sit in a car, because the car, the seats kind of wrap around, okay? So when I sit in the car, okay, basically the seats wrap around. It's really hard. You know, you got your seatbelt on. It's really hard to get to your gun. This is ideal for the professional driver, okay? Um, if you're a professional driver, uh, whether that be like, let's say, maybe a professional, you know, bodyguard, right? Because, uh, you know, some, some people that do bodyguard work, you know, they're the designated driver. Or even if you're like an Uber driver, and I know Uber's got rules against their people, um, you know, carrying guns, but hey, I mean, I think that people's lives are more important than Uber rules, but uh, that's besides the point. But, uh, you know, this is an ideal holster uh, for somebody that drives for a living, okay, Wh whatever, whatever your situation is. Uh, so, what I want to talk about today um, is techniques for, you know, if you have to use your gun in a self-defense type of situation from inside a vehicle, I want to talk about the techniques that you would use that work really good uh, with a shoulder holster like this, like this uh, Kraft holsters, uh, Falco holster. So, um, but first, before I even do that, let me just throw this jacket on. And obviously, if you're going to be carrying this concealed, you're going to be wearing it with a jacket. So, it is going to, you know, you're going to have to, uh, you know, wear something to cover this up if you intend to go concealed. So, uh, you kind of, you know, obviously in the fall and winter, you can wear a jacket. In the summertime, um, you know, you kind of just have to, you know, you have to decide if that's how you want to dress in the summertime. Now, you could, I don't know if you guys remember that old show, Miami Vice. I mean, they had, they used to have like these, uh, these thin jackets that they used to wear back in Florida, down in Florida back in the 80s. You know, that might be a style of clothing that you might want to get into. But, but as, as, as you can see, obviously this, this covers this pretty good. You know, you get to the gun like this, come out. Boom. All right, so let's talk about before we even get to using this in car in the car, since we're on the subject, let's talk about you. You know how you're going to practice at the range with this holster, okay? Because what you don't want to do is, let's say, that's the direction that I'm shooting in, right? Hey, let me take this off so you guys can see better what's going on. Let's say that's the direction that I got shooting. What you don't do, and what they're not going to allow you to do at the range, is take the gun over here, pull it out. Point the gun at the guy next to you as you come around, okay? They're not going to allow you to do that. And uh, that's one of the reasons, like, when I became an instructor some 12 years ago, um, the NRA, because, because basically I took my uh, certifications with the NRA, uh, the NRA only taught their, uh, get the snap it, only taught their uh, personal protection classes uh, with uh, a strong side outside the waistband, uh, holster because they wanted to make sure people weren't doing the motion that I just did. Uh, but there, you know, there is a, there are techniques for practicing with a shoulder holster uh, that you can use uh, that will, you know, where you don't have to point the gun at everybody, you know, as you pull the, the holster out. So here's the deal: if I'm shooting in that direction, right, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically, okay, I'm shooting that way. I'm going to turn my back, face the gun, right, in the direction that I want to be shooting in. Pull the gun out, okay? Notice I'm keeping my elbow up, all right, because I don't want to point the gun into my arm. And then from here, see, the gun's staying in the direction I want it to be in, all right? I'm going to come in, bang, 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 come back in, right? Gun stays pointed that way, right? Finger off the trigger, get the gun back in the holster. Now, the gun that I'm using here is the SIG 2022. Let me pull this out for you guys. Now, this is a double action, uh, single action uh, pistol, right? So I'm, as you can see, I'm, it's, hammer, it's hammer fired and I'm carrying it with the hammer down. Um, at, at the moment, the only, you know, basically if you're gonna be carrying a, 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 uh, a gun, like, you know, if you're gonna be carrying a gun in a shoulder holster, I recommend that either it be single action, double action, or double action only. I don't recommend that you carry a, um, either a single action gun or a striker fired gun like a Glock in a holster like this. Um, because here's the thing, it's leather, like, yeah, right now, you know, it's perfect, it would be perfectly safe, but over time, leather sometimes does collapse, um, it does weaken, and, you know, you don't want to get into a situation where the, the leather starts collapsing around over here, where the trigger is, and then as you go to holster, it, you know, it, it hits the trigger, and it fires the gun, so, um, you know, until, until they come up with a design that has a piece of kydex where the trigger guard is on the shoulder holster, um, if you're going to carry a gun in the shoulder holster, I recommend that you go double action, single action, uh, like this, with the carry with, carrying with the hammer down, or double action only, right? All right, so one more time, let me show you guys that technique. So I want to be shooting in that direction, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my back, okay? I'm going to get to the gun. I'm keeping my elbow up, right? Pull the gun out. Gun stays in the direction I want it to be in, right? And then to reholster, I'm going to turn my body, put the gun in the holster, and then get the snap back in its place. Okay, so that's the technique that you can use to, to practice your holster drills at a two-dimensional range, where let's say you only allowed to shoot in one direction. Uh, let me demonstrate that for you guys now. Okay, so that's, that's the direction I want to shoot in. I'm going to turn my back, point the gun where I want it to be pointed, to keep my elbow up, get the gun out, come out, right? Come back over here, decock the gun, get the gun back in the holster. Okay, so that's the technique that we're going to use to practice on the two-dimensional range. We're going to keep the gun pointed in that safe direction, and we're going to rotate our body as we need to, okay? So, uh, let's move on. The, 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 the thing I really want to talk to you guys about, uh, again, uh, geared towards the professional driver. You're, you're, you're driving a car for a living. Um, you're in a situation where you need to be able to defend yourself or, or defend somebody else. Um, and this is an ideal holster for the professional driver. Now, aside from that, um, you know, especially here in the United States, like last year we had some riots around the country. We did have people attacking cars so this might also be something that might benefit um you know just just you know people you know just civilians people that 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 don't do security work but are in a high risk area uh you know for hat for being let's say carjacked um or or you know basically you know uh, you know being attacked inside the car this is also an ideal holster for that so um here's, here's the uh i'm in the car seat over here okay uh, as you can see, because of the, the way the, the car seat typically wraps around, it's really hard to get down to, um, you know, to, the, to the gun that I would normally have inside the waistband, okay? So this is a lot easier to get to, okay? I'm gonna, lifting my elbow up, pull the gun mm -hmm. out, all right? So here's the thing. From here, I can easily shoot to this side all the way around, switch to the other hand here, come up. I can shoot all the way around to this side. So I can shoot all the way behind me. So I can shoot 360 degrees, right? Or almost like 350 degrees, right? But I can go almost all the way around. Like I can, actually, I can lift myself up. I can actually get 360 degrees because I can aim, point the gun at the tree behind me there. I can come all the way around, point the gun to the tree over there. So if you're a professional driver, you have to be really comfortable with this idea of transitioning left side, right side, 
that's kind of, you've got to practice this. This has to come natural to you, okay? This has to be a natural thing, okay? Now, again, you never point the gun at your legs, right? Right? And then to reholster, you put it in like that, put your snap on, okay? So, gun up, come up here, come up over there. Come around this way. You can do a magazine change. So obviously if we're shooting immediately behind us um, in a vehicle, we have somebody attacking us from the back seat basically, okay? Which is a very rare situation, right? Basically you'd have to be like doing like prisoner transport or something really crazy like that, um, you know, to have to, you know, be shooting somebody at that, that such a odd angle. But as you can see, you can do it with a shoulder holster, okay? Just by, you know, coming all the way around like that. Going around this way. I am really stretching myself here. I even hit the rim back there. Okay, so, decock, put this in. So you can see how you can make that work. Now, uh, I'm going to say one more thing with regards to um, if, you're, if you're defending yourself from inside a vehicle. You know, if you're being attacked from the outside, okay, what you want to do is use your car to get away, okay? Um, you know, your car is a much more powerful weapon than a pistol. Um, so, so if you're being attacked, you know, you can use the vehicle to drive away, drive through the people that are trying to kill you, you know, um, so that's your, that's your first option. Now, if you're boxed in, right, and you have to shoot from inside your vehicle, um, a lot of times people will concern themselves with, you know, trying to shoot out the window, okay, or, or you know, or, or getting outside of the car to shoot. If, if you're in a position where you have to return fire, right, in a self-defense situation, uh, the people shooting at you do not care about your windows. Likewise, you shouldn't care about your windows either. Okay, if you need to shoot at somebody, right, in order to defend your life, you shoot through your window, okay? Uh, you don't pay any, you know, there's no, you don't pay any regard to the window. Now, if you're shooting to the, to the windows to the left and, and, and right of you, right, the, uh, the door windows, as soon as you put one shot through those windows, the window's just going to shatter. There's not going to be a window there, so your, your second and third and fourth shot are not going to have to go through the window. Now, if you're going to be shooting through your front windshield, and that also applies to your rear window as well, okay? If you're shooting through your windshield, right, the, the windshields are designed to be shatterproof. So once you fire through that, it's not going to, it's not going to break. Uh, what, we have, what, what we have seen in testing is that when you shoot uh, at, you know, through a windshield, right, from the inside out, uh, the bullets tend to rise, okay? They tend to skip up. So what you're going to do is, like, let's say you're shooting at a man-sized target here, right? Instead of aiming here, you're going to aim basically at the belt area so that as the bullet goes through the window, it rises a little bit, you know, and it'll come a little bit higher. Now, the other thing to be aware of, um, if, if you have, you know, you can shoot continuously, if possible, through that same spot, right? Because what's going to happen is if you can put two or three shots in that same general area, you're going to start basically tunneling a hole through the window. So, you know, the first shot is going to go, you know, is going to go through the window. It'll deflect up a little bit. But the st second, the third, the fourth, the fifth shot, you know, now they're going to be hitting less and less window as they're going through and you're going to get less and less deflection. So, you know, there's a reason why we carry, you know, why we carry extra magazines, why we have, you know, 12 round magazines, 15 round magazines, so that you can put a lot of shots, you know, through things like windows if you need to. Okay, so you don't worry about trying to get out of your car. Uh, and trying to, uh, you know, trying to, like, not shoot through the glass. Uh, the quickest, fastest thing for you to do will be to shoot through the glass. With this high, you know, very possible that there's going to already be incoming fire through your window. So it's kind of silly to be like, you know, hey, I, you know, I, I'm going to try and not shoot my glass. Just shoot through the glass. Um, okay. Now, um, how about the sound? It's going to be really loud because all that, all that noise is going to be um, echoing back on you so here's the thing if you're a professional driver right in a high risk type of situation 
Uh, you definitely want to have be driving with with goggles on right now. Obviously, I'd be using these because these are prescription glasses. But even if you don't wear glasses, you will wear your shooting glasses, right? Uh, always, all the time, right? So you so you're always going to be wearing your glasses. This way, you don't get in that type of a situation. You don't get glass in your eyes. But even in even if you're not in the car, right? Because even let's say you get into some type of a gunfight in the hallway or something. You know, if you get hitting sheetrock and stuff, and woods getting hit around you, you can get like wood splinters and sheetrock in your eyes. So. You always want to have protective eyewear, eyewear if you're in a high-risk environment, okay? Uh, and the other thing is ear protection, right? If you're a professional driver, you know, one of the things that you want to keep handy in your car, like right there, you know, r you know right there next to you, right, uh, is ear protection, right? Get the electronic ones. The electronic ones, basically, they, they dim the sound. Now, naturally, do I mean, do I carry that in my car? No, because I don't do security work. I'm not in a high-risk environment. But... If I was a professional bodyguard, yeah, you better believe I'd be I'd keep a pair of electronic uh, earmuffs, um, you know, really handy, like right next to me. And I'd always be driving with eye protection on because that's my job, right? I'm carrying a gun, right? Well, if I'm carrying a gun, this type of a gun, right? You know, um, you know, with extra magazines, right? Because I, I'm doing like high risk work. I mean, you know, you're doing high risk work. Yeah, you're gonna want glasses. You're gonna want to have those electronic ears. It, it just doesn't make sense if you're doing that kind of work professionally to have some of the protective gear with you but not have like the, uh, the rest of the protective gear. So you wanna have all your protective gear with you. So that includes guns, glasses, earmuffs, okay? Um, so I hope you guys found this uh, information uh, uh, useful, uh, interesting, uh, entertaining. And uh, here's the thing, I, very important, you know, something I, I always tell people, I have not invented any of this stuff, okay? Everything that I tell you guys, I have learned from other people who do this work, you know, who have been in combat zones, who have done, um, you know, um, you know, security detail in places like in Iraq, in, in Afghanistan, who have worked in, as bodyguards in those places. So, um, I don't, I don't invent anything, okay? I, I copy, okay? I, I learn from other people's experiences, okay? So, um, so everything I told you guys, I have learned from people who have actually done that kind of work. So. I hope it's, it's useful to you guys. If you like this uh, video, give it a thumbs up, share it. I'm also going to put a, um, um, a link below in the description area. Um, so if you guys want to go over to Craft Holsters and, and check out this holster, um, yeah, take it a home time. One of the nice things I like about this, it's easy on, easy off. Because to take this holster off, I got on my belt, I got to take the whole belt off with this. Uh, you can see how easy it goes on, easy off. Uh, one thing you're going to definitely want to do is you're going to want to lock tight the um, the little rivet screws over here right because those will will definitely come loose if you don't lock tight in fact i would probably uh recommend now that i've seen this holster i would recommend you know recommend that if you order this holster i would put a memo like a note asking for them to tell to send you additional you know at least at least two extra uh of the you know rivets you know screw riv rivets that you know in case you lose these or they fall out at some point uh, so I, I would i would request that at the time that you place the order uh it will probably become very uh, useful to you and again um if um you know make sure you if you're a really tall guy tell them your height so that they give you enough strap okay um but this is a really cool holster i really like it um definitely something i'm going to wear if i want to impress people you know if i'm going to a gun range um and i want people to you know to see me and see my Cool holster, you know. So anyway, I'm going on and on now. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're not a member of the channel, please subscribe. I'll talk to you guys soon.